Welcome to an exciting Let's Build. In today's episode, we have the Twitch 109 from Unique FPV, a 3 inch quadcopter with 4100 kV motors, XM20 ESCs, micro CMOS camera, NAS32 board, and an S bus receiver. This build has me really excited as it's the first one that I've actually helped design and have had direct input on over the last five months that we've been working on this. With me today we have Lance on the camera and Zach, the creator of the Twitch 109. So, let's build. Alright, so uh, now I'm going to start uh, pulling things out of the package here. Get a little prep going for the build video. I like to use a uh, magnet to help me out with all the screws. It really helps finding them when you need them. Uh, the rotor X come with two sets of screws. We want to use the shorter, smaller screws. Uh, the clockwise have the mark on them, and the counterclockwise do not. So I'm going to do the motors first. So what kind of motors are you putting in the package? These are the uh, 1306 uh, 4100 kV Rotor X motors from T-Motor. Um, these things are pretty awesome with the few that we've tested. So um, Yeah, they've been a lot of fun. And the newer ones have longer leads, so we shouldn't need to worry about adding any extra leads with those. Okay. And uh, sometimes the screws get stuck in the motors and packaging. Make sure you're all clear there. Alright. So now that we got our motors. I'm going to go ahead and unpackage the ESCs. So what kind of ESCs are we using on this build? These are the XM20 V2s. And uh, you can also use any KISS ESC. Um, I actually have a mount where you could use any 4-in-1 ESC available too. But uh, in this video we're going to use the XM20s. Um, these are beginning to be my favorite just because you can actually 3D with these ones as well and uh, the functions that you actually have um, with the computer versus the KISS. But the KISS actually perform a little bit better in my opinion. So, But it's just splitting hairs with the SCs basically. So. All right. All right, so now we have our ESCs and our motors. Um, we're going to get our frame going. We have a bottom plate. We're not going to use that right now. We just need this uh, main frame here. There we go. All right. So first thing we're going to want to do is prep the motors and the ESCs and uh, get them sorted up first and uh, that will work for the first part of this video. So now I'm going to cut all these little bullet connectors off. I'm going to cut them just right at the tip. Um, you could also use the DYS-1306 motors. Uh, some of those have a little bit longer leads. Uh, in any case, I'm just going to directly solder them to the ESCs. Where from 
me to go. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to start with dismounting one motor. I'm just going to use one screw for now. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to measure up the length for the ESCs. And so the wires we're going to cut further are actually going to be the ESC wires, not the motor wire, not the motor wires. Now, depending on how uh, tight of a configuration you want to make this, um, you could leave a little bit of slack for the ESCs, it's up to you. So, uh, I'm going to try to go as tight as I possibly can. So, once you have your first ESC marked, you can go ahead and kind of match that up on all the other ESCs. So uh, at this point in time, you might want to start turning your soldering iron on, get it prepped ready to go. But prepare yourself for the soldering battle you're about to endure. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get real. Uh, next thing you want to do is go ahead and probably prep your shrink tubing and approximately 12 Everyone's so lucky to have an assistant uh, get the soldering iron going for them, as, are there? Yeah. <laughs> I think I have a crew with me now. <laughs> Just a little bit, maybe 
sixteenth of an inch or so. So yeah, I was trying to count earlier the amount of connections that were made in the first version of the one on one. And I lost track. It's up there. You wouldn't think that there's that many, but if you, especially if you do the KISS ESCs, and you have to solder those things up, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of connections. I mean, no more than a regular mini quad. It's just that it's smaller and you'd expect there to be less. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's pretty much the same as a regular quad. It's exactly the same. It's the same. But it's just smaller. It's a little more tedious. So that's what makes it a little bit more challenging. So now, how long are you? Did you make those wires for the ESCs, for these, or did they come that way? Um, yeah, I cut these ones. Okay. Um, approximately about an inch, inch and a quarter, and it also depends on how much room you want to give yourself when you have to repair an ESC. So you want to give yourself a little bit of room, but it depends on how clean you're trying to make it too. So you can get exactly precise. Uh, the way that I'm doing it may not be the most completely clean, but you'll have a little bit of room. But we'll try to clean it up as much as we possibly can. With the new mounts, it's easy to do. Alright. So, I like to use this solder with the, the flux inside of it. It's a 40-60 solder, so I don't really dip anything in the flux. Uh, as long as you're, you know what to do. You're just kicking or something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how else to say. Like, come on, let's get on point there, Zach. Yeah. Mm. A little off, a little off. So now I'm going to try to tin all these wires, all the motor wires and the ESC wires. So you should usually should have some sort of ventilation or mask when you're soldering. Lucky enough for us, we have a ventilation system. So. Texas from all the harmful smoke. Notice one of the things that you do differently is that you don't use any um, <coughs> tin. You don't use any um, flux to. It looks nice and shiny. That shiny, oh. Yeah, it's shiny. All right. So now we're gonna start uh, soldering on some motors. So you're going to want to make sure that you put the heat shrink on the ESC leads. Ooh, hopefully I cut the right size. Now are those included? Yeah, there is heat shrink. So you pre-included all the heat shrink? Yeah, but it's not cut in. They're just pieces of heat shrink. Oh, that's cool. But also... More than most cats. I mean, it also depends on where, what parts of the... Well, you want to use heat shrink and not, so the heat shrink is not that expensive that most people have. 
if you need any extra. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the tips of these off a little bit just to kind of shorten them up. Take any excess solder off there. Alright. I'm not building it. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, we've got uh, someone periscoping in the background here. Um, so. Periscope in the build video. <laughs> You've got to have it live, right? Yeah. Alright, where's the heat shrink? Alright, make sure you got your heat shrink on there. Um, and then I like to line up the motors, or excuse me, pinch on the ESC. Just kind of solder them together. Yeah. We're gonna need more stickers from Steve. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I may have lost our stickers, so I'm sorry, Steve. Alright, now we just got to do that three more times. One thing that about soldering with like small connections. Now at this point we're going to mount the, the motors to the frame and the one that has the, the little mark on it are the clockwise motors so you're going to want to go ahead and orient your 109 so you'll see the two little slots have the battery strap and so we'll put number one motor over here and that'll be clockwise so we're going to put the, the mark on it and uh, line up the wires on the frame. So let's go ahead and mount the motors. So Zach, yeah. how, how was your mom? <laughs> Well, she said that's my question. <laughs> Why are you interested? I think no, she's I made an educated guess that nobody's going to be waiting seconds watching through the. This will be sped up, I'm guessing. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm her, 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 heard your mom. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we should also have a little, little video. <laughs> Showing how to put your friends to work. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and match the little dot on the other side.
All right. Once we have the motors attached. wires in towards the battery strap, not in the front, or the back of the car. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and mark the end of my servo wires for my motor direction. Now we're going to go ahead and try to wire up Actually, I don't think we want to do any more wiring on this. I think I need to get the Peru wired in. Peru! No, no Peru. I, I'm the only one that likes to say it like a maniac. Yeah, Peru. Fine. So we're going to get our glue ready. Now what does the Pululu do on this pot coffee for those that do not know? So this Pululu is just stepping down the voltage to 5 volts for our video equipment and our nays. So I like to associate my in and out with lengths or different type of wires. So in this case we're going to use two different lengths. So we have the servo. Okay. Approximately three inches. Sorry. Declining. 
Uh oh. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> No, I came up with that name originally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the stupid fun joke. How do you sneak up on a hole Oh yeah, how do you sneak up uh, on a uh, tame rabbit? On a how do you sneak up to a tame rabbit? No, to an untamed rabbit. To an untamed rabbit. How do you sneak up to an untamed rabbit? You sneak up on him. <coughs> that's so bad. It was bad, wasn't it? That, that, that's like... That's not even dad joke about that. How do like. you, how do you sneak up to a tame rabbit? Tame way. <laughs> well. Oh my god. <laughs> the badness of the second one was just a thousand people, which actually made it kind of funny. Oh, that's bad. We'll never forget it. Now the whole internet will be able to share it with us. Put that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and get my heat shrink on. Get the heat shrink on. Get the heat shrink on. So right now I'm going to strip the uh, wires from the Pululu.
And then for the battery leads, we're going to strip these uh, black wires out a little bit more. And give these guys I don't know, at least like a quarter of an inch. We're going to have to strip them. And twist them together. Stuff them in the back of an XT60. So this is probably one of the more difficult parts. soldering iron. There we go. Now we're going to add the Pululu to this group of wires. Pululu. The Pululu. Pululu. Now if you're using a ESC that has the BEC on it, you don't have to wire in a Pululu. But this is a nice, safe, reliable source of power. All right. Yeah. Let's so Zach, on the four and one, what do you do differently? So on the 4 and one you're going to take the uh, motor wires directly to the ESC pad. So that's more of like a stack build. So it's going to be a little bit taller, but um, actually a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. But the only problem with that is they only have a smaller amp size available, so you're not really allowed to do any sort of... 4S with any sort of motor or but I know that's going to change with the upcoming micro craze I know there's a few companies looking at making those Now we're going to twist all these together. You're going to get these in your XT60. And at this time, you also want to pull out another little bit of wire for the LED strip. the LED strip you don't have to add these wires or with the KISS ESCs you, don't, you can also solder, solder them to the battery cables there too like my little conjunction of wires there like metal hot glue. Metal hot glue? Yeah. Alright. Now. I messed this part up a few times. Make sure you solder the positive to the red wires. <laughs> Do a little bit of solder on the XT60 connector. There's a nice little twist. Do the twist.
Horse water. So now do you add the cream to the uh, X216 before or after you're doing this process? Usually you'll use a little bit of uh, li liquid electrical tape. Just because the wires are so close and it gets so hot that the uh, heat shrink tubing always just melts on the wire. And then I also finish it off with heat shrink tubing. That's the best thing. Now is this so on the uh, Form 1 ESC you just have the regular X260 tail coming off of it, right? Yeah, you, you, there's a, a board and you just solder one lead from your XT60, so... And you don't have to use the PULU. And you don't have to use the PULU. So it's definitely easier. So if we, I had one of those that did like 18 amps instead of the 12 amps. And if it had the BL Heli format, I think we'd be in business. 3D it, etc. So now I think we're ready for the nays placement. So with the nays, we're going to prep it, we're going to have to add the buzzer, we're going to cut the servo cables, we're going to attach the positive and negative with the servos, um, or excuse me, the ESCs. So we're going to prep that, so we're going to have to bring uh, our pigtail up for our receiver. So we'll cut that and run it through, run it through the frame. Now go ahead and leave it nice and long. We can cut the rest of that off later. We also need to add a positive and negative for our FPV feed. We 
we're going to run those through the middle hole where the battery strap goes. Both sides. So to make it easier to wire up the nays, I'm going to attach the screw that I used to attach the camera mount and one of the spacers. So I'm just doing this because that's what's supplied in the kit. If you have a little 5mm nylon standoff, this will also work. Um, but I'm just doing this so I'll show you guys it can be done. starting to look a little bit like a mess so we got our two wires coming off for our LEDs so let's go ahead and tuck those down This is the point where you got to do a little bit of tucking and moving of wires to kind of get them in place to make everything sit nice and flat. So you want to pull your 5 volt out in front with your servo cables from the Palulu. Make sure your ESCs are clear from all the mount screws. Maybe you can zip tie your things down tighter in place. Store. It's pretty handy. A 
some gas stations. Really? Yeah. See, you probably buy it from most FPV stores too. Some of the bigger ones. Now, how many coats of li uh, liquid electrical tape do you recommend? I just get gob it on until I don't see any more wires, any more connections. And really, it can't hurt. Because we're also going to finish this off with uh, uh, some heat shrink tubing. And I use just like a little zip tie to dab everything on. Just works easy for me. And then I cut the end off of it. And I can still use it. Speed up the process with the heat gun. So now we're going to start with uh, motor number four and uh, work our way down. Or you can start off with number, motor number one. I think we might start off with motor number one and the positive with uh, from the Tolulu. Now it's important to cut these wires into place because there's not very much space so you're really going to make sure that uh, you get these things as tight as you possibly can. Alright so let's go ahead and start off with motor number one. I do these one at a time just to make sure there's no confusion with which motor or ESC is being hooked up. It's really important not to cut too much of the of the wire when you're stripping it so you really may want to make sure that you get just the jacket of the wire not any of the wire itself. I'm going to go ahead and tin these and the reason for that is just to make sure you have a really good connection to the nays. When you're soldering try not to do any soldering directly over the nays unless it's an actual connection just so you don't drop any solder on the microprocessors. Let's go ahead and clip. We 
really only want maybe a sixteenth of an inch of wire. Not very much at all. And now let's go ahead and prep our nays. So we're going to want to get the servo on one, two, three, and four. Clean up the flux, make sure none of them are touching together. Alright. And with this, you just want to make sure there's no confusion with the, uh, with the servo positive signal and negative. So in this case, all the square pins on the nays are the signal wires. So we're going to start from the outside and work our way in. Um, so in this case, we're going to go the black wire, the negative, first. And this is motor number one. And then we're going to go the positive from the nays. And then we're going to go signal to ESC number one. Check your connections. See, I didn't get my positive in there good enough. Crazy bird inside the house. <clears throat> hey, Lyle. Hey, hey. There we go. That's solid. All right. So now we're gonna do motor number two. Find our servo. Cut our wires into place. Cut and strip these. Oh, yeah. See, I just cut my servo lead oh a little bit too short. Why'd you do that, Zach? Because I felt like it. So on these, I like to do a little bit extra length, just because if you cut it too short, you're like <laughs> up a creek without a paddle, right? Yeah. Well, as long as you have the proper wire stripper, like these ones go up to, down to 32 gauge, so um, it's not too hard to determine the appropriate wire size that you're stripping. But you definitely want to leave a little Captain bit of room Hunt, so cool. for error. <laughs> the darker is the orange heart. So we want to work from the outside in. We're going to go with the negative first. Signal. Motor number three. And also, this is going to be folded back down, so this kind of gives it a little bit more room, too. A little extra 
eighth of an inch there. <laughs> Which isn't much. Definitely helps out though. Yeah. Especially on these little ones. It's like such small tolerances if you screw up. It can be a bit of backpedaling, so take your time, definitely. And so one by one, you're getting those ESCs on there. Yep. So one by one. Now we're on ESC four. And now signals at the top and ground is at the bottom. Correct. Or well, it depends on how you're looking at it, but it's ground is on the outside then. Correct. And okay. also, it's indicated by a square. The signal is a square pad on the knees. That's good to know. And you could always double check on the, the flat side of the nase, it's also marked for reference. All right, now we need to add a, a positive and negative for the outgoing video feed. Now are you tapping into the nose board for that? Or? Yeah, I'm just tapping into signal five and six. Uh, not the signal, but just the, the positive. The five on Yeah. And then it's pretty convenient. Yeah. It works out like that. Alright, and then we'll make sure we have enough room for our 5 volt FPV gear. And just make sure you don't pull those out the other side of the frame. And you don't have to cut any off the end of these, because we could just pull it right back and shorten it on the other end. So don't worry about cutting these ones into place. We're going to want to do the same thing with the uh, servo cable. And you don't have to worry about these ones, the length, just pull as much as you need. And we'll pull the, pull the excess through in the top side of the frame when we wire up all the FPV gear.
Now we're just going to want to cut the excess end. So always work from the outside in. Alright, and then uh, depending on what uh, receiver you're using, um, you're going to want to do the ground, the positive, and if you're using an S-Bus, you want to use port number 4 on the naze, or if you're using a PPM, you want to use number 1. So in our case, we're using an S-Bus receiver, so we're going to go on port number 4. We're also going to put a buzzer on this uh, frame, so we're going to go ahead and wire and solder that up. So you just need a positive and a ground. And my soldering iron. Let me tighten it up a little bit. That's crazy. Are people making fun of me? No, I'm making fun of people. Uh, <laughs> my mom and <laughs> So I believe it goes, yeah, it goes ground, positive, and then signal. I keep it. So once we got the positive, now we'll get our signal. Now that signal is going to be a little different if you're using um, PPM versus uh, SBUS, right? You're going to put PPM on one versus four. I just said that, yeah. <laughs> well, I will cut all of that out. <laughs> I'm so Somebody's focused on the angle. angle. I'm so focused <laughs> on like getting the right shot at this point. Is I'm like, is it counting all those hearts? <laughs> Dude. Okay, we're gonna have to take a break here in just a few seconds. We got 47 seconds left before our next. All right. Break. So now I'm gonna prep for yeah. our buzzer. So in this case, I think I'm gonna use blue as the positive. Um, whatever you do, just remember which one you may mark as positive on the buzzer. They come with a few different colors, or you could use your own wire. wire. But the buzzers provided are all different multicolors. Right. So I'm going to use blue for positive. It might be. Alright, so we're going to do the blue for the positive on the buzzer.
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and flip the nays around. Expose our buzzer cables. Let's go ahead and get those cut and wired in. If you were recording, we have another problem. Whole nother. Whole nother problem. Whole nother. Alright. <coughs> so I did the blue to the positive. And it's marked on the beeper which one's the positive. Kind of fold these back a little bit like that. We'll just leave that hanging out for now. Yeah, taking all these wires is gonna be fun. All right. Just ignore us. Ignore me. I can't believe how fast it went. Hmm? It went together. Yeah, no, it's a pretty quick build considering it's like a full mini quad and microphone. Alright, now it's time to attach the bottom pieces. Let's see. I need this one. Plate. Sorry. Clean all this up. Looking at me sideways. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. It's the action light. That, that's like the last shot we'll ever use is that one. So these ones, I mean, basically, you could use the Ninja Flex um, spacers provided, or you can use uh, just a 5mm nylon standoff. Uh, I prefer to use the Ninja Flex ones just because they give a little bit more cushion and resistance. Um, and they also help with the vibration. However, they're a little bit harder to uh, screw on. Alright, so we're going to go through the bottom plate, attach our carbon fiber, and our screw. Go ahead and put all four screws through. Alright, at this point, everything's starting to come together quite nicely. So now that we're going to go straight through the nays. Our four, all four holes. Just kind of tip it over like that. Probably be the easiest way to work with everything. Uh, make sure that you have your arrow facing down towards the frame because that's going to be upside. 
Uh, if you manage to wire it backwards, you could always fix that in the clean flight settings. So now we're going to attach our spacers. So once you get them started, you could use a set of needle nose pliers or just pinch them and hold them. You want to give yourself a little bit of gap to work to squeeze all the wires together before you finally cinch everything down. So leave maybe just a small gap. like a power tool for this part <laughs> yeah well at least when you have to work on it you don't ever have to take these things off again unless you have to change out the knees which is rarely an occasion that's the benefit of using the rubber spacers and stuff yeah, but you'd have to do the same thing with the nylon. You'd have to just thread them through. But at least you only have four bolts to hold the whole frame together. It's only four bolts to replace if they ever did break, so... Um, I can't imagine how you end up breaking them. No, I mean, the way that it's stacked together with the, the Ninja Flex, the amount of give that everything has. I mean, they might bend, but who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's the cool thing. You've got the Ninja Flex in between, so it does give it a little bit yeah. of give and uh, vibration absorption. How many forward? Huh? Oh. All right, where'd my little tool go? Okay. What is his tool? All right, so now we've got to do a little bit more rearranging with the wires as we're about to ready to uh, tuck everything together here. We're just trying to get the, uh, the screws into the frame. Uh, make sure that you have all the wires in place. Let's see if I need to tuck these servo wires underneath there. And this is one of the harder parts, right? Getting everything to fit into the cavity. Yeah. Once you're squeezing everything together, um, it just takes a little bit, kind of tucking wires and checking to make sure everything falls into place. And, whatnot but um, and trying to make sure nothing's like pinching <laughs> right exactly so take your time doing this part yeah and see now you can start to pull through the 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 RC and the 5 volt wires so that'll help clean things up so as you're tightening things down you could also pull those wires down and so what wires are those again those are the 5 volt coming up to the front 5 of the volt frame. and then you got your receiver wires cool right very clean. So, so the wires that you have coming up towards the top is you have your wires coming off the battery for the LED, you have your signal coming for your receiver, and then you have your 5 volt for your video feed, for all your video gear. And then you have your uh, little buzzer hanging out the back. Cool. So yeah, now you just line up the screws with the holes, 
Make sure that you're not pinching any wires in between the screw hole and the, uh, the bolt there. This is another reason also why you want to leave a little bit of room in the spacers and not make it completely tight just so you have a little bit of wiggle room to get the bolts in the hole there. With this long of screws it's sometimes a little challenging to get them to fit right in the right spot. There it goes, tucking down quite nicely. Now before I squeeze it down all the way, uh, you really just want to inspect and kind of move everything around, make sure that you're not uh, squishing things or putting any more pressure on the knees that uh, you need to, and uh, moving the little wires around. You can bend the Ninja Flex, kind of tuck any wires that you need to. That's convenient. Yeah. most part I think we got it pretty good. Uh, make sure all the ESC, see there's a ESC lead that was stuck in between the spacer. That's probably the biggest thing. Just make sure you see all your the ESC leads are free and clear of all your spacers. Nothing's pinched before you finally tighten everything down. All right. So we're ready to torque these down a little bit more. Congrats. Now I've got the bottom part completed. At this point in time, let's go ahead and finish up our, uh, our buzzer lead. Tuck in those wires and get the heat shrink over this bad boy. Uh, yeah, so we actually want the buzzer to be on the top of the XT60. Go. And another thing that we found with the buzzer is if you don't want to use a buzzer and uh, be all heli sweet, you can program your ESCs to beep after a minute and it works like a buzzer for the most part. There we go, Put the heat shrink over that.
Right now it's time to wire up the uh, FPV feed. Try to leave yourself a little bit more room than I did on this one. So you definitely want longer leads coming off your FPV feed. It just helps. Um, it's a little harder to stuff them, but uh, yeah. And these ones we're not going to tend right away. We're going to pair these up with uh, all the other FPV gear. So now we're going to grab the FPV camera, the mount, the camera mount, and the video transmitter. This is the TVS Unify Pro. You can switch it between uh, 25 milliwatts to uh, 800 milliwatts. So we don't need the transmitter right now. And that's on race band, right? Uh, there's a couple bands that you could do that with, um, but you gotta have your ham radio license to open those frequencies. <coughs> but it does do FCC legal transmit limits or something. Correct, yes. Right. Alright, so with the VTX plug, you got uh, a small plug and a big plug. You want to go ahead and cut this thing pretty much in half just to be safe. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the smaller end of this plug. And let's just go ahead and strip all these wires. And I usually match the camera, um, give it maybe a little bit longer with the camera. Cut those leads. Now I'll just go ahead and strip all these. You could do like maybe a quarter inch strip here. All right, let's go ahead and get our soldering iron. I usually like to start with the uh, positives. So get your three leads all paired together. So once you got a nice little twist together, go ahead and solder those up. And those are your positives coming out, right? Correct. Those are the positives. And we'll just go ahead and get the negatives taken care of. You want to try to keep make sure that the shrouds are lined up on the wires. The tips don't matter as much because we can cut off the excess, but you want to make sure that the shrouds are pretty close to even to ensure good connection. Then we'll go ahead and do the video wires next. And can you explain the wiring harness that you have going on? So basically we're just pairing all these wires together and basically like a little hub. So 
So we've got the two video wires. And then now we're going to get the audio. So cool you have audio hooked up for it. Yeah, and you could actually get a lot of tel telemetry options from the audio type stuff through immersion or even the Terranus stuff. Go ahead and uh, clip the tips off this a little bit. And uh, I like to put a little hot glue on the connection to the camera. I like to put the hot glue on the connections of the camera just to to help make sure they don't fracture off and crash or move in. Those wires are just really sensitive. Um, so let's also get our heat shrink here. Some pieces. Yes. There we go. So that's, like, that's actually a pretty simple wiring harness. Yeah, it's not too bad. <coughs> Yeah, you got two three wire connections and then you got uh, two two wire connections. Baby sits in the corner. All right, so we can go ahead and cut the, the plug off the servo connection. We can leave about that much on there and save the plug if you'd like. All right. Now it's time to void a warranty on this receiver real quick. Now, uh, future <laughs> kits will hopefully come with uh, pre-desoldered bare board um, boards, but for now I think they're this, <clears throat> right? Yep. Then obviously if you get this as a pre-built kit, you don't have to do this part. I'll avoid the warranty for you. <laughs> And make sure it works. <laughs> so one thing I like to do before I start cutting on the pins is mark the uh, ones that I'm going to use with the Sharpie. Those three there. And then always save your little box. So I know that the bind was down there, so this bottom connection is going to be my signal, my positive, and then my ground.
That's seriously how easy it is. Mm. Jeez. Like I could even do it. It's like when I, when I did this whole process of deep pinning, I did a little differently and much more infuriatingly. Diagonals. Diagonals all the way, dude. Oh my god. Mm. That, that that whole process takes all of just a few seconds. That's not too bad. I finally bought myself a good pair. Alright, so you just want to make sure none of these connections or pins are touching each other. Make sure none of your connections are still on the board or got stuck to the sticky. So, uh, starting from left to right, it's going to go signal, positive, and then ground. And we're doing these on the bottom. So I'm going to tin these. I think my hot glue gun's plugged in enough. You just want to kind of use it sparingly. Just enough to like kind of help with the pressure. Also not a bad time to glue it to the mount. Just glue it on the top part of the mount there. Make sure it's nice and straight. Go ahead and let that dry. Go back to the receiver. on so it's gonna go signal positive ground signal positive ground Positive. Ground. Oh. Make sure none of your solder points connect or touch. Getting excited. We're almost done here. Almost done. Almost done. Yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, for something this complicated, I thought it would take us a little bit longer. So I do the clear just for fun. That way you can still kind of see it. Cool. <laughs> there you go. We've got this. I 
love you, Chun Tubing. Okay. Take a little Zacto and cut out the bind button just so the heat shrink doesn't mess with it. Smart. Fail safe. Uh, There we go. All right, so now we're going to take our TBS Unify Pro. Zip ties. You're eating chips. I'm sorry. I got good bit of weight. Have a little bit of humor, right? Painful. Although this part is slightly painful to watch. I'll speed it up. <laughs> Were we gonna stop? Were we gonna stop and do it again? Yeah, he said he was gonna. He started doing it, so. What was it that you did wrong? Uh, I just. Uh, what are you doing right, right now exactly? I'm zip tying the, uh, the SMA mount to the frame. I mean, you could use screws or something like that, but. Zip do you have to cut the wire at all on the transmitter? No. And it just kind of tucks up in there. It tucks up in there. That's sweet. You have like ventilation at the top there? Yeah, nice. a little bit of ventilation at the top. Well, we don't run it hot enough to need ventilation. Yeah. And that way it gives, so basically the, you know, the zip ties give it some give. And I mean, this mount is basically, you know, you don't have Freaking to worry. smashable. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything coming out with that. And then the way that this tucks, the little button that you need to change the video transmitter, uh, channel and power bind, all that fun stuff is right there. And that tucks up into the front of the mount. And it's also this little hole there. Oh wow, so you got a little access holder to hit the button? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So this tucks up in there, like that. And then you could hit the little button. And it lights up, so when you hit the button, you could see when it lights up on the inside there. That's so cool. That is awesome, yeah. for sure. But it's easier at this point to, you know, read the Unify Pro instructions, find the channel that you want to configure your video transmitter to, and, um, Check, make sure that you have video, um, and then at this point, it would be a good time to, you know, plug in your battery, make sure that you know all your connections are good, uh, bind and set your fail safes to your receiver, and uh, do all the configuration <laughs> with your uh, clean flight. But uh, definitely make sure that you set your uh, your fail safes. So let's uh, go ahead and go to the computer and check out the uh, configuration with clean flight. Cool, cool. So now that we're over in Clean Flight and we have our quadcopter connected and ready to go, we are going to go over into the CLI tab. Um, 
Once there, we're going to paste in our quadcopter configuration. Now, depending on your quadcopter, like the, your ESCs and motors, you might have a different configuration. And all of the configurations that we have are found in the video description of the video. So, if you haven't yet, check out the video description, find your configuration, copy it, and um, paste it into uh, here. And then hit enter on your keyboard. <clears throat> that should paste it in. And if it doesn't already save it, enter save. And that should reboot you over. Okay, so now that we have everything configured, there's a couple things you might want to change. Uh, depending on your uh, receiver, if you have an SBUS or a CPPM receiver, you may want to do this. Um, this quadcopter was set up for CPPM. Uh, the one in the video description will be for SBUS and CPPM, so depending on your configuration, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, you may, if you soldered the board on backwards, you may have to change the board alignment. Um, yeah, so let's go over into the PIT tuning. Um, I like my pitch and roll rates to be around 0.69 or 0.70 or around there. Um, if you want the quadcopter to be less um, twitchy, uh, lower the roll rate. If you want to be more aggressive, increase these. Um, now if you are using the XM20 ESCs with the 4100 kV motors and a very aggressive prop, you may want to lower the PIDs. If you're using the 3100 kV motors, you may want to raise these. Um, it really depends on your configuration and what you're flying with. Um, and the PIDs, again, maybe it's a little bit different depending on uh, your components. Okay, so one last thing I want to go over is the motor tab. So with your battery connected in here, you can uh, click on the different values to check the motor and double check that they're spinning the right direction and that everything is working. Uh, so pending all that and you're good to go. Uh, so at this point what you're going to want to do is make sure that your uh, quadcopter is bound up to your transmitter and we're going to head back to the bench and finish this up. Alright so once you bind it to your controller and uh, check your settings on clean flight we're just gonna go ahead and plug it in other way Zach <laughs> see how that beeper is gonna beep until you have um, something transmitting So it usually has a little cover on top of it, but sometimes with the heat shrink it kind of melts off. So make sure you configure your buzzer and clean flight. Alright. Sweet, so that works. Alright, so once everything's working, we have our motor direction tested and everything, we're gonna put everything together. So let's go ahead and stick the camera through. Plug in the video transmitter. Once you do reveal it. Put your hands away for the camera so they can see. And if you can, try to keep this hand out of the shot a little bit more. You know, it's hard. But... <clears throat> there we go. Push the VTX into the top. 
pigtail down there. Heat shrinks came off. All right, so now you want to kind of tuck your uh... <coughs> tuck all your connections in the front there as fast as possible. I'm trying to watch those hands. Now the receiver you're going to put on the bottom of the the frame. You're going to run the uh, antennas out the back there. I'm going to try to tuck everything in there. Sometimes it's easier to get the mount started on the screws. Slowly push it down. And then use a tool to kind of maneuver things. Definitely a tight build. <laughs> uh, you can squeeze it together. It'll hold tension pretty well. There you go. Now we'll put on the lock nuts. Once you get all four down uh, or set, then I'll usually torque them all down after that. Thank you. 
you don't have to get it like incredibly tight with these either. And then once they're set, the the mount should hold the nut in place to where you shouldn't really need tools to loosen or tighten this. All right, now we're just down to the finishing touches. We can add our LED strip and glue it onto the back uh, is an option or you could just not put those wires in. Um, and then the last bit is either zip ties, tape, or heat shrink. So, you know, we could leave it like this with the zip ties, you know, tuck the wires under there. That leaves it nice and clean looking, but also leaves the ESCs more exposed. Uh, or, you know, you could wrap it up with electrical tape, uh, try to do it nice and clean. That makes it nice, easy access. Also, you know, protects it a little more. Or the heat shrink, but uh, the heat shrink also does weigh, you know, more than tape or the zip ties. And so with this build, it getting with the battery is real close to 250 so uh, heat shrink does look good but uh, also watch for the weight but if you don't care about the weight uh, go ahead and add the heat shrink um, last little bit here is to go ahead and add the uh, screws into the video cam now there is a GoPro uh, mount coming out for this right yeah, there's a, uh, a GoPro mount going to be available for this. Um, Not that the native GoPro session mount, right? Yeah, it'll mainly be supportive for the, the GoPro session. Although I guess you could put a regular GoPro on it. Yeah, you could be put a regular GoPro a little wider. Um, but if you do put a GoPro on it, you are going to have to save the tune settings and it does put a lot of stress on the motor so if you start planning on flying with the GoPro you know you're gonna start breaking and frying ESC's a little bit more often so it is one thing to consider um, but a lot of people you know if you really want that HD footage you could put it on a bigger rig or yeah toss it on the 109 Now with the camera mount, um, if it's too hard to move up, all you got to do is loosen the screws, you know, and that should be able to do it. Try not to push just the camera, um, that'll put a lot of stress. As you can see, I can't really move it uh, with my finger, but just a real quick turn with a screwdriver moves it quite nicely. Um, last little bit is to put props and your antenna on. So I like to use the direct SMA connector, it gives it that nice like tight clean look. Um, or you could use you know one of any of your favorite 5.8 video transmitters. So should we put props on? Yeah, let's put some props on. And put tape. <clears throat> Why? I mean, that should work as is, right? I just need to redo it. Yeah. Are the motors going the right way? Yeah, totally. We did that in our uh, configuration. Right. The motors are going the right way. Um, checked all our motor configuration. So the last little thing we need to do is our LED strip. So this one we're going to cut it even right at the end. Oh, sure not to cut my antenna. <laughs> That'd be cool. And you could have done this at an earlier time too. If you're watching this.
Now if you choose, you can use the LED strip that you can change with the nays and wire that up accordingly. Uh, the ones that are provided in the kit are solid color, so you're going to want to go ahead and tan these. Alright, we'll just finish this up with a little hot glue. I don't think the GoPro's going right there. It's fine, I've got you on my camera. Yeah, literally, like freeze, because it's my fuck 16 on this. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Sniff that hot glue. Uh, to stuck to it. Now you got to clean up the hot glue a little bit, but that's pretty much done. Add some props and go fly. Cool, cool, and there you have it. This was the Twitch 109 Let's Build from Unique FPV. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did making it and creating this video. Um, join me for future build videos coming up, and again, I really, 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 really hope you enjoy this quadcopter. It's something very special for me, and I'm very excited to be able to bring, help bring this to market. Um, so tune in for future build videos and for more flight videos of this quadcopter and more. And uh, thanks for watching.